Welcome to this third video of the 84 part series where I'm going to totally blow your mind and make you have a mystical experience. This video's topic may be one of the most important videos that I can make and it is about the Dhyana Linga D-H-Y-A-N-A -A? Uh, Linga, L-I-N-G-A The Dhyana Linga is a temple in India consecrated or created by Sadhguru. I'm going to share with you the things that I know about this temple because what I know isn't exhaustive by any means. It's just what I've experienced. And hopefully it'll be of some benefit to you. So the Dhyana Linga is a temple. Um, if you want, I would strongly suggest that you pause this video and Google the Dhyana Linga to see what it looks like so you have a mental image of what it is because uh, it'll be much easier for you to connect to the sphere without, whereas if I just talk about it. So from my understanding, the Dhyana Linga is a, is a temple. It's a, uh, a big dome made out of stone and it's the size of maybe a basketball field, maybe a little bit larger than that. And in the center of this uh, stone dome, is a is a lingam, um, which is made out of stone. Um, it is made out of uh, granite, which is very very dense. And inside of the granite stone is a solid mercury core. Now, what Sadhguru did is he, along with fourteen other people, energized this stone or this mercury, I should say. What energizing means is, you see, when you give off human emotion, that can be measured, even with scientific instruments, I think, now. Um, but usually it doesn't go anywhere, you know? You just feel happy or blissful or joyful, and that emotion radiates out of you, and some people can even feel it. Oh, wow, he's really pleasant. He's a good vibe about him. That's what they say. But when you have enough self-mastery over yourself, you can take the same human emotion, plus more, you, you take your very life essence, your energy, or the things that make up your, your chakras, that energy that flows through you. You can take that energy, and instead of you know just radiating out into the universe and feeling happy and good, you can store it, you can put it inside of an object. For example, you can put it inside of this copper ring, or you can put it inside of um, let's say a tree or the trees behind me or this this uh, metal uh, fence or you can put it inside the stone that I'm sitting on or standing on the tiles you can put it inside of rocks you can put it inside of different metals now the energy will hold that emotion to the degree that it has the physical integrity to do so so for example um Let's say a tree doesn't really hold the physical integrity to hold energy for very long. We can stand here, let's say 10 of us, and we can chant mantras and do certain practices and rituals and really blast our energies out forward into this tree. And this tree will hold it. And anyone that is sensitive that walks by this tree will be just be blasted away. They'll even start crying maybe. But this tree won't hold it for an hour. After an hour, it'll just be regular tree. And if you could take copper for, or let's say, let's say another example, let's take another example. You can take much more dense or solid elements, let's say a rock. You can store your energy in that rock for up to 20 years. Some rocks, 100 years or even longer. And the shape of the rock also matters. If it's just, you know, a jaggedy old rock, then the energy will concentrate in the center and it will be stored there for a very long time. Whereas the edges, it'll dissipate and it'll kind of look like any other stone. Whereas if you find very particular types of stones, which are ex extremely rare, you can store energy in those stones for a very, very, very long time, to 100 years or more. Or you can carve a stone into a particular geometric pattern. And that stone will hold your energy for a very long time, up to a thousand years. 
the most I think an object can hold or a space can hold a certain consecrated energy is 100,000 years. Mm, that doesn't sound right, it doesn't feel right. Well, the reason why I say that is because I believe the temple in the, the Adi Yogi statue, which is in Coimbatore, India, it's a big Shiva statue, just the head, the metal head, uh, you know, uh, looking up like that. And in front of the statue is a uh, Mercury Lingam. It's just a big, gigantic egg the size of like a human body. If a human body were to go into the fetal position, that's the size of the, the Mercury, solid Mercury, which is incredibly heavy. It's like weighs one ton. Whereas the density of Mercury compared to, let's say, the density of a stone that size would be 10 times greater or 15 or 14 times greater because Mercury is one of the densest elements on Earth. And that's significant for various reasons, which I'll get to. But um, continuing on with my train of thought, that that temple, I believe, will, will be alive if it doesn't get destroyed by an asteroid or some invasion, invasion happens and just destroys that, that place. It'll, uh, it'll stay alive for 100,000 years. So let's say 98,000 years from now, a human being can walk to that place and sit and become effortlessly meditative and enjoy the benefits of that energy that it has to offer for the human well-being. So, coming back to the Dhyana Linga. <clears throat> the Dhyana Linga is a special Linga because it is consecrated or it is energized with all of the 114 chakras. Or we can say with a all of the seven dimensions of the of what's inside of the human body so we have the seven energy centers seven chakras that temple has been consecrated with every aspect of the seven chakras what that means essentially is that if you walk up to the Dhyanalinga or you don't even have to be in its physical presence if you just connect that being it's as if you are standing in front of the highest possible manifestation of a spiritually enlightened master so if you look at life as a video game, you can, you can master certain things. You can master yourself. And there are various stages to enlightenment. And, but you can fully max out your level. Fully max out. Meaning you can't go any higher. So once you can't go any higher, that's the Dhyana Linga. That's the energy that it emanates. Which is extraordinarily powerful. <clears throat> I think that human well-being and human wellness has improved and increased by let's say a factor of 10 these are just i don't know the numbers but it's it's a massive improvement since the origin of this Ganalinga temple which was in 1998 i believe so 20 some odd years later and it has done wonders to the planet people that don't know anything about meditation or consecration or spirituality that energy gets them wherever they are if they're sitting in canada and you know they walk down to the park and they sit down in a regular chair and they just they don't know any spirituality nothing but they just sit down, sit still and, and and relax and and contemplate that energy has a potential to grasp you and once it grasps you it'll never let you go and you will go sink deeper and deeper into spirituality into, into liberation ultimately so it is a re remarkably profound tool for transformation you can buy a yantra which is a a miniature representation of this temple and you can hold it in your room and it will emanate the qualities that that it offers and you will absorb it your body will absorb it so it is a kind of a, a effortless way to meditate i would recommend anyone watching this doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, to download a picture of the Dhyanalinga and store it in your room. Because you don't, like I said, you don't have to be in its physical presence to, to connect to this. You can be anywhere on the planet. And once you do, magical things will happen. The Dhyanalinga temple will hold its energy for a very long time, maybe a thousand years or more. And Sadhguru says that even if the planet gets destroyed, even if a gigantic asteroid comes and demolishes the entire earth, that energy will still be held in that space 
or this, in the space of the universe because it's not it's not physical in nature it is prana it is a life force it is it has no it has no uh, relevance to whether the physical body exists or not or the physical structure exists or not I should say so that should give you some perspective as to what this is it is prana prana energy and this word prana is not easily described because again it has no physical basis it is not it's not energy per se it is like it is like <laughs> it is like um I don't know, there's no good metaphor to describe this. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see what else needs to be said. Well, I'm just here. I'm just sitting here in uh, Australia. I moved here seven days ago, and it's a remarkable land. Uh, one of the, the best places that I've ever been to in my life, and I want to stay here. Uh, Australia has so many things to offer energetically and it supports human growth. Truly a spectacular place. Very happy to be here. Well, that's it for the Janalinga Temple. I'm sure that uh, I've missed some things and I will revisit this topic because it is so vast, so much, so potent. So again, I urge you to look up the Janalinga Temple, watch some videos by Sadhguru, print a picture and post it in your room and you will gain the benefits.